uh, dear pure urology uh, friends good evening uh, today topic is something related to prostate as you all know the trp is the gold standard monopolar trp has come then bipolar trp has come then bipolar vapor rejection has come then bipolar enucleation has come uh, bipolar enucleation by Olympus, coral star, different type of loops, Herman loop, everything on the way, but all are heading towards the enucleation. Enucleation is enucleation, enucleation is enucleation. It is complete and complete removal of the gland with less bleeding. And as the time goes on, old people are also coming with large glands. So you need to be minimally invasive. Sometimes you may not be able to operate TURP, fluid overload, hyponatremia. Even with bipolar TURP, it takes time, bleeding. All these are there. Recently, we have come across with the uh, injection of uh, saline, taking regium uh, bites and valves etc. So it's interesting because old people are increasing with coming with the more BPH LUTS, obstructive symptoms. So today our speaker is Dr. Loko Lun, who is very well known urology professor from Hong Kong. And presently he is in FACAM and he is FRCS Edinburgh and he is FCSHK FH came. I will introduce him officially, even though it is second time. After that, I will hand over the program to him. So, dear pure urology, ur urologists, the topic today is latest evidence of minimally invasive surgical treatment for BPH, that is MIST. Dr. Law Kowloon is Clinical Associate Professor, Urology Team, Department of Surgery, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Service in Charge Urology Team, Department of Surgery, Alice Ho Mu Ling, Nether Seoul Hospital. Consultant Urology Team, Department of Surgery, Prince of Wales Hospital. Chairman, Asian Prostate Federation, which is very important group in Facebook and is very active. Director of BPH Registry in New Territories, East Cluster Hospitals in Hong Kong. Moderated by Polyp in Society of International Urology 2019 in Grand Round. Introduced Regem technology in Hong Kong since 2020. Performed this technology for high risk patient under local anesthesia. Today, our talk will be focused on these things. Introduced transperineal prostate biopsy is favorite uh, topic. Fiducial gold markers implantation in Hong Kong. Introduced multi-parametric MRI vesicle imaging reporting and data system, VRADS, in bladder tumor, endoscopic submucosal dissection in Hong Kong, urologic contribution award, Chinese Urological Association annual meeting 2018, that is appreciable, best poster display award in hospital authority convention 2019, merit team hospital authority convention 2019, and last, Video Presentation Award, 17th Urological Association of Asia Congress, Malaysia 2019. Very academic. I am seeing him last 10 years. In fact, I have taken his opinion before starting the pure uh, call in law and uh, dong. First message I sent them, they encouraged me to do this. And today it is 10,000 urologists Facebook. Very glad. I am very happy that they encouraged me. And it's nice after some time I am coming back to Professor. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation. Over to you, please. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to your invitation and congratulations of Pure Urology to be the uh, largest uh, Facebook group in, in Hong Kong or in, in all, all over the world. So today's my topic is uh, something uh, update in the evidence of MIS for BBH. So can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, I find that uh, latest uh, systemic review talk about some uh, myths for BPH. So, this include the uh, itin, moderate therapy, dual 
uh, PAE was today embolization. It seems that the policy volume were similar and comparable except the PAE because PAE can treat a larger prostate greater than 80 grams. However, for the baseline IPSS, QMAX, Osroid, Restriction were similar in all groups. Okay. For the results, uh, the IPSS, it shows that the reserve to relief PAE was similar to that of TRLP. However, less important change for the IT or microwave therapy for the prostate. And how about quality of life? It also shows similar as IPS improvement. So it seems that uh, the resume Eurolift and PAE was better than IT and microwave therapy of the prostate. So how about the QMAX and post roy resurine? It shows that these two parameters were improved to the greater extent after TRLP. Uh, moderate improvement after water vapor therapy, that is resume or microwave therapy, but just less improvement after ULIP or IT. So how about the ejaculation function were maintained after the water vapor therapy or ULIP? However, TRLP needs to be a significant and bothersome ejaculate dysfunction, especially the rich phase ejaculation. So today's topic is mainly focused on the resume. So what's the mechanism of the resume? It's a radio frequency generator that heat water into the steam and the steam injected into the prostate with each cycle lasts for nine seconds. And each changes just release the thermal energy to prostate tissues causing cell death and the closes. It results in opening of the prostate channel. And the heat transfer is by the transition zone only. That means that it will not transmit it to peripheral zone or surrounding organs. It will reduce the time of surrounding tissue, especially the rectum. So here's the diagram showing that the pretreatment of this uh, prostate showed as uh, a prominent median loop. After treatment, three months later, it showed the endoscopic wheel, so patent channel already. So it seems that uh, the resume can also treat the median loop. So it's very important to have a good taste uh, selection. So prostate size should be between 30 to 80 grams. Too large, I think uh, the result is not that good. Too small, it probably is a hypercontractor bladder. So usually we have make sure the patient did not have active urinary tract infection. Although patient without any catheter, we have baseline IPSS, IEF, full rate, so that we can compare after that. And also we have a prostate sizing, make sure there's not exit uh, 80 grams. So nowadays in Hong Kong, uh, our center is mainly a uh, day center procedure, not needed into the operation theater so that the patient can be discharged on the same day. So and it saves the operation theater to perform other surgery like uh, tumor cases. Okay. So this is a video showing how I insert our local anesthesia. Because it's very important because all the cases now perform under local anesthesia, no general anesthesia. So it's very important to have a good uh, LA injection. So first of all, we test for the process size. In this case, uh, it's showing that there's no much median loop. Uh, usually we make sure that the patient have uh, optimal process size. So here we measure the process size. In this case, it's around uh, 50 gram. So it's a good case for resume. Afterward, we disinfect the perineum. So with the uh, knowledge of the TB biopsy, we also have a similar LA injection technique as shown in this video. The ultrasound show that needle is injected to the space between the rectum and the prostate, which is very important to inject deep into the mount effort, which is the angle between the seminal vesicle and the prostate where the pain control is around here. Beautiful. So it's very, yeah, yes. So, so it's very important to inject the little deep inside to this angle of uh, central vesicle and the prostate. After that, we also inject a local anesthesia to the Lurasca bundle, where is the very side end of the prostate. So it seems that it's very extreme of the little because I want to aim at the Lurasca bundle just lateral, also lateral to the prostate. So we identify the lateral edge of the prostate and then we inject the needle 
So at, at, at the very extreme, we even found the S seminal vesicle and then inject this one. So you can see there's a very, very extreme deleto. If inject the local anesthesia, usually in total, we will inject a 30 mil, 1% nitrocaine with adrenaline for the 60 kilogram uh, patients. So now you can appreciate there's a seminal vesicle here. And then I inject the local anesthesia around the Livraska bundle, left and right. So it's just around whole prostate to have a good prosthetic block. So afterwards, we proceed our resume procedure. It's very important to test the steam, whether there's a function well. You need to test it very uh, detailed. You need to hear the sound. You need to see the steam flow. Is it uh, function well? I also come across a case that the steam is not functioning well, then I need to change a new one. So each cycle is take for nine seconds. And then uh, before that, we need to have kind of priming of this uh, machine. And this piece is, is um, a delivery device with the needle here. And the panel will show you the nine seconds from one to nine, and then uh, is uh, repeated again for another cycle. So the panel will just uh, demonstrate, uh, is it the steam fun functioning well? Is the bladder over the standard? So the, all the panel will just give you some idea. Afterwards, uh, we give the uh, sunken jelly and then we proceed with the delivery device. This device is a smaller flange than the receptacle so that there will be less chance of the rule structure after resume. It's very important not to hit the mucosa because there's no a thermostatic hemostatic effect. So you make sure that the view is clear. Try not to hit the mucosa, uh, make the bleeding block your view. So it's good to be very gentle. You climb up the prostate, go into the bend neck. At the juncture, you can look at the bi loop or tri loop or any median loop. It's also important to look for any blood tumor, any blood stone. If there are no uh, such better pathology, then we need to measure the distance between the bend neck and the worm antenna to decide how many cycles that you needed for the resume. This is one, two, three, four. This around four, five a uh, few of wheel. This are around two centimeters. So uh, each one centimeter, we have one cycle of treatment. Just like this, we start with a uh, three o'clock position. We start with bend neck. So we, we count one, two, this is one centimeter distal to brain neck. Afterwards, we press the needle into the prostate tissue firmly without any steam leakage. It's very important you need to push your needle deep inside because there are hole around the needle. If you're not pushed deep enough, then there will be the chance of the water vapor leakage then the, the effect will be just suboptimal. And then you need to have an instrument just around the area that you leak your water vapor. So every cycle is proximal to raw maintenance because we need to protect the sphincter to avoid urinary incontinence after the procedure, just like an education or TRP. So every treatment should be proximal to raw maintenance. So that's why we always need to have the raw maintenance as a, as a guide do everything possible to it, and then we avoid damage of the sphincter. After the left side, you can go for the right loop. Also, we have a two view of view. That is one centimeter distal to brain neck, so that we will have less chance of brain injury, urinary orifice injury. So all the treatment will confine to the T zone, not extended to the peripheral zone. So afterwards, the circle, and then we go back to look for the raw maintenance. So it's now proximal to raw maintenance and then go to the both obstructing area, especially around the apex, usually there's a kissing loop. So we mainly focus on something that obstructing and then give the treatment around this obstructing area. So since uh, there's uh, no median loop, then we can remove the delivery device and put in the body catheter. So in ultrasound, uh, how the resume uh, working? So on the left side, you can appreciate that the views of echogenic. Yes. Area. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that the, all the T zone 
was diffused by this water steam. So it's very important. How about the right side? When you inject the water vapor, the echogenicity is also diffused around the right T zone. It means that on the whole T zone was suffer by the water vapor. So the result after three months will be very optimal. So if there's a median loop, the resume can also help. So if the treatment is not 90 degrees towards the rectum, instead we turn our needle to 45 degrees. Try not to aim at the rectum. Instead, we aim at the medium loop, the most obstructed area. We also follow the, our principle one centimeter distal to brain neck, and then we give the nine second cycle. And usually the median loop, we take around one to two cycles. It's already good enough and nine seconds, and then we check for any office bleeding. And then if there's not much immediate loop, then we just give one cycle of treatment. So even after the view relief, you can see there's a view relief that inside the ring bladder, then we can also help the patient by repeating resume after the view relief. We, we remove uh, the uh, clip if possible, and then we can also have the resume treatment. So it's not contraindicated after the mist, like the IT or uh, ULIP. So it depends on the patient's symptoms. If after mist, you can also uh, have another mist with uh, resume or other uh, modality. But uh, resume is uh, quite uh, promising uh, even after the ULIP. In this case, um, the patients claim that the flow is improved after the resume. So uh, the tips and tricks of the resume is uh, what I call is a FOV. It means that there are a few of will that I will tell you more what's the mean by FOV. It's translated by uh, centimeter is uh, one centimeter equal to two FOV. It seems that it's the most coverage of whole T zone. There's some of the overlap between each cycle. So it will have cover all the T zone just like in this picture. So what is mean by FOV? So the tip of the delivery device just shown in the yellow uh, in color. This is um, the landmark here, the tip of the delivery device. And the end of this yellow uh, part of the delivery device draw a line here as uh, the distance between this dot and the emergency line is 0 0.5 centimeters. So as shown in my video, I retrieve the delivery divide to two, it means that one centimeters. So one and two, two FOV then equal to one centimeters. So everything one centimeter distal to bare neck will be very safe, not to damage the bare neck or damage the urethral office or the interurethral bar. So this is FOV. So uh, how about the latest, uh, longest uh, follow-up for this uh, resume data? is a five-year outcome RCT compared to shame with the resume. So in this uh, large-scale uh, study, we've involved uh, around 200 cases with uh, poor IPSS QMAX less than uh, 15 mil per second, the volume is 30 to 80 grams. In this case, it's uh, divided into shame and also the resume. The shame part is just only with cystoscopy. So five years data show that's 48% uh, of improvement in terms of IPSS, 44% improvement of QMAX, 45% of improvement of QL. So it seems that it's very uh, uh, good data showing that it's, although there's a uh, very safe procedure, it also have uh, function and also improvement of the symptom and also uh, your flow. And there's no reported device or procedure related sexual dysfunction or erectile dysfunction. Okay. So it's compared with uh, retreatment in terms of surgery retreatment rate, as compared with other MRT, we assume it seems to be it's been a very good uh, procedure with only 4.4% of five year surgical retreatment rate, as compared with other MIST, it seems to be a very good uh, modality. So in Hong Kong, uh, our center already performed more than 200 cases. We included the uh, ALU with or without fully catheter. We also include the symptomatic non-track symptoms. 
For those patients with uh, acute urinary tract infection, bladder pathology, urinary stricture, urinary jelly bladder, which is not the sole reason for the last by the BBH, we will exclude that. The median age is around uh, 71.5. So all of the cases uh, not without uh, anticoagulant, uh, we also have uh, around 34% uh, uh, of the cases, uh, uh, around 32% of the cases have, uh, uh, 42, sorry, 42% 40, of cases have uh, anticoagulant. And uh, all of the them is under local anesthesia. Our mean operation time is around 25 minutes. The mean positive volume is around 56. We also record the pain score for the transrectal ultrasound probe is around two, uh, local anesthesia is around five, for the procedure is around four. So one patient required a variation, the patient is on a passive band pre-op, and there's no birth transfusion, and all the patients can be discharged on the same day with a uniform catheter, except the one required better irrigation. And for the ARU without folate catheter, the mean time is around one week uh, for the TWC after the resume. However, if the patient already on catheter before resume, we usually take around two weeks for TWC. So 100% of the cases can successfully uh, win off the folate catheter uh, with 96% uh, of successful TWC within three weeks post up. The median time is around seven days. There's no retrograde ejaculation, no urine incontinence. Uh, so far, there's no surgical retreatment. And three of the cases have uh, de novo erectile dysfunction, but usually uh, subsided after the procedure shortly. So we also have some reemission rate. Uh, some of them have uh, a hematuria, decreased urine output, recreate ARU, but successfully win off the folate at the end. Also, some for the urine tract infection, which account for few percentage of the total cases. And all the cases is grade one uh, uh, craving the, the dental classification of surgical complications. So the, P, uh, the PSA is so that the improvement from uh, 5.1 to 3.2, the post wide residual also improved from 134 to uh, 83. QMAX improved from nine to 30.9. And IPSS also improved from 33.5 to 12. The QL is also improved from four to two. The show total significant improvement in terms of the uh, post Y, restructuring, QMAX, IPSS, and also QL. It shows the P value is uh, less than 0 0.05. And there's no retrograde ejaculation, although some of them have transient erectile dysfunction, but usually supply shortly. There's no urine incontinence and no surgical treatment. We also analyze uh, some of the uh, patients with uh, a folic catheter. It seems that our data show the median catheter time for those with uh, catheter before the resume. It takes around 16 days, around more than two weeks for the TWC. And for those, uh, although there's ARU, but they already win off the folic catheter before the resume, it takes around seven days to win off the folic catheter after resume. So uh, to summarize uh, my uh, uh, presentation by saying that uh, water vapor therapy is office-based minimal invasive procedure for BBH. It has been shown to be a good safety profile and have a significant durable symptom relief with an improvement of growth rate after five years and also preserve the sexual function, integrate ejaculation and also during continence and also can successfully treat the obstructing or not only the lateral, but also the median loops. However, it's very important to give the patient a very clear instruction that it requires a short-term catheterization. And also we need to take a short-term medication like the uh, alpha blocker or five alpha reductive inhibitor. In, in Hong Kong, we now maintain three months of alpha blocker or five hour reductive inhibitor because the data showing that uh, this resume uh, takes at most three months to take the maximum effect. So in this uh, interim period, we, we want to support patient with the medication. And then eventually we just stop it after a few months of medications. So here's the end of my presentation. So thanks for attention. Once again, I thank uh, Dr. Chandra for invitation me uh, this lecture today. 
and I welcome for any questions. Yeah, nice yeah. presentation. Nice present please, uh, presentation. I like to ask few questions. Uh, is it necessary to give local anesthesia in all cases? Okay. Yes, uh, because the water vapor is uh, quite high temperature. The patient will just feel, oh, that's a very hot uh, injection towards his perineum or around the prostate. So even we uh, give some alfentanil, it's not good enough. So usually for the local anesthesia around the prostate, we, what we call is prostate block is very good pain control. We tried it uh, without the local anesthesia. I find that it's quite impossible to finish the whole procedure without the prostate block. So I suggest uh, to give the prostate block, plus some minor fentanyl, and also some advocate to have a, a longer duration of silicone jelly before the procedure, let's say uh, 20 minutes with whole uh, liquid king jelly, silicone jelly to uh, anesthetize the lymph. So to maximize the pain control. Uh, what is the uh, length of the needle which goes into the prostate to inject this hot vapor? Length of the needle oh. which oh, okay, goes okay. into the prostate. Okay, it, it's around one centimeter, the whole length, one centimeter. So even if it's a very small prostate, like uh, 30 to 40 gram, the needle is still good enough within the prostate. We don't go beyond the prostate because the length is just only one centimeter. You know, around 30 to 40 gram, each loop is usually around at least one centimeter. So the needle good enough to put inside the prostate instead of put outside the prostate to cause damage to other surrounding organs. Okay. If the prostate is very thick, uh, very thick sideways, yes. uh, this yes. needle uh, may be short for yes, yes. vapor effect to cause? Yes, uh, usually uh, the treatment area, according to the uh, company, is around 1.5 to 2 centimeters. Oh, so if the, the body is very thick, I would suggest to have more treatment, like up and top, because, you know, if the body is very thick, the body length is also proportionally is longer. So I would suggest to give a more treatment for that. I, I will have uh, two level. One is upper level, and second is a lower level to give a maximum treatment so that they have uh, more positive channel opening. So I, I focus on the um, one centimeter apart with each cycle. However, we can go up and down so that we can have more coverage on the prostate if the prostate is large. In one patient, if you take one needle, how many injections you can give? Any number or you have to take separate needle? Okay, uh, the maximum cycle uh, of one delivery device is 15 cycle, 15. Okay. One five. So, so I think uh, if we stick to the uh, principle that all the process should be less than 80 gram, the 15 cycle should be good enough. I just uh, try one to two, times with the process around 80 gram, I try 14, 14 cycle. It's not even 15. I think 14 is good enough for the prostate around 80 gram. Okay. Uh, if any uh, bleeder, did you notice after removing the needle, which obscures the vision and it may uh, decrease the chances of subsequent injections? Oh, very good questions. Uh, actually, this one, this delivered device, there's a turbo flush. Turbo flush means that if you have uh, this button to click on, then the flow will double or triple. Then with the high water jack, there's a water jack that can have removed the, the hematuria that blocks your view. And then you can find the clear wheel and then you can finish your procedure. So that's a function called turbo flush. But I, I, I strongly agree that if there's a, a bleeding, it should take your action faster to finish your job as soon as possible. Yeah. Try not to handle it around because the bleeding yeah. will eventually get bigger, bigger. 
So in this situation, triple flush and do it as soon as possible is my trick. You have shown nice video of trans perennial infiltration of local anesthesia. You are a favorite uh, candidate for a uh, professor for trans perennial biopsy. Can you tell in the near future, do you think the trans rectal biopsy will be replaced by trans perennial biopsy? Yes, totally agree with you. Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Nowadays, we seldom do the transrectal one because uh, the transperineal one, we have performed the study that uh, the infection rate is uh, lower than the transrectal one. And it's now because we have local anesthesia, uh, the technique is good enough. So most of patients are well tolerated. So I think, uh, I, I don't know, how, how about the India? Is, is it? Uh, we, we are doing proportion? still transrectal. We are doing still transrectal. Very few people are doing transperineal. Transperineal. Next uh, video, I think we should take transperineal biopsy with you. Uh, sure. How about the local anesthesia of the skin? Is it painful or should we give local anesthesia of the skin? Oh, I see. It's also another good question because uh, usually we, we have the choker. We have choker to replace multiple skin puncture. So, uh, if, if we have time, we can also share the, another uh, section talking about transferable positive biopsy because as still have some trick. We do have the choker to replace motor puncture. We have insert one choker on the left side. We insert another choker for right side. So the uh, whole procedure, or no matter this, how many cores, we just have two puncture sites. Okay, okay, okay. And also we will have the amla cream, amla cream before yeah. the procedure so that we can save the local anesthesia subcutaneously. We just focus on the local anesthesia around the prostate to Very minimize the, the volume of local anesthesia. We, we should take this topic after one or two months. If you if sure, you sure. mind, it's a very interesting sure, sure, sure. entire world, including European and USA is moving towards transperineal biopsy. Yes, 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 yes. It has yes. Advantages, a lot of advantages. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I, I can share it with you because it's very important to have good block and the choker, then you can change easily. And then you need to change the ultrasound probe. It's different. It's yeah. from the end side fire to the side fire. It's different. Then I can show you the difference then. But what is the needle you use for infiltrating local as well as biopsy? Needle uh, size. I, oh, the size. The size is I use the lighting gauge. The lighting gauge, the lighting gauge, uh, long needle is around 15 centimeters needle. Just, just can in, inject deep into the Mount Everest that we call the angle between the seminal vesicle and the prostate. And also we can use it to transfer the prostate biopsy for, for the local anesthesia. It's also the same needle. So I just translate the technique from TB biopsy to resume. How, how do you compare this regim versus uh, the other technique of regius, uh, where two uh, stapler type of needles will go and compress compress the lateral walls of the prostate. How do you compare this steam inhalation, uh, steam installation versus a stapler type of uh, compression of the, which one is probably more logical in uh, sick patients? Okay, so it depends on the uh, patient preference because the staple one that we call Ulyph, the staple one, the Ulyph can be have immediate results. Then the patient can have uh, immediate self voiding. Um, but for the resume, you need to put in, put in the folic catheter because different mechanism, the policy will have edema after resume, the patient need to put in the catheter, but the Ulyph will have immediate effect. However, what we have mentioned in the systemic review is showing that. Um, the QMAX will be better in the resume. Okay, resume is better run. than Eurolift. Yeah, it's better than Eurolift in the long run for uh, QMAX. But for the symptom score, it's more or less similar for the uh, resume or Eurolift. So it depends. In my think uh, both of them is a good, good technique. Uh, it depends on patient preference and the course. You know, you know the Eurolift will have a different uh, fire, and each fire would have the course. 
will also need to discuss the question. In, in the long run, the, the rule may have a more expensive and then the resume. So it's also very important to discuss with the patient. Uh, last couple of questions. Uh, what uh, uh, a nucleation versus bipolar nucleation versus laser nucleation, what is your preferred treatment as of now? Are you still using bipolar to URP or bipolar nucleation or the laser nucleation? What is a very uh, much practiced in Hong Kong? Okay, yes, uh, our, our Hong Kong practice nowadays is divided to the prostate less than 80 gram and the prostate larger than 80 gram. For okay. those who are less than 80 gram, we deform the mist like uh, we zoom or you lift. But those patients with a larger prostate larger than 80 gram, we perform the bipolar lab, uh, two lab and whole lab. So, so you, you're an expert in the two lab, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so is, is it true that uh, you also select uh, the patient is uh, not yes. just the active gram? Yeah, less than less than 60 grams, we do TURP bipolar. I see, I see. More I see. than 60 to 80, we go for a nucleation with laser. Uh, oh, few people are doing with the bipolar nucleation, but most of the India does with the homium laser. I do thulium fiber laser. Uh, I am mm -hmm. happy with it. And... Okay. Uh, what is your personal preference in large glands? Oh, yes. Uh, if the prostate is, uh, let's say, is uh, 100 or so, I will stick to bipolar lab. Okay. But for, for the uh, prostate is around 80 gram, less than 100 gram, I will stick to laser and equation like uh, Tulem or Homium. So what, what's your opinion? Uh, last question. Uh, my, my opinion is, uh, uh, laser is slightly uh, more used nowadays when compared to bipolar enucleation. Bipolar enucleation is little mechanical, whereas yes. laser if learning curve is uh, steep, but once yes. you learn uh, a more, uh, uh, more uh, complete enucleation can be done and the entire yes. world is appreciating uh, the homium and as well as TFL enucleation. Coming, okay, to the, coming to the last last question. Okay. Uh, uh, most of the patients on BPH are on deutosteride. Okay. When you cut the prostate, when you are on long-term deutosteride, some amount of fluffy, fluffy prostate will be there. It will not be normal gland. Yes, yes, yes. Some, some less bleeding will be there. Do you think this type of change will affect this minimally invasive treatment for prostate, those who are on deutosteride. Okay, okay. So I think uh, in, in our experience uh, in Hong Kong is a lot of them have deutosteride because uh, the Hong Kong hospital uh, covered this course. So uh, many of them have uh, deutosteride. However, I, I experienced so that there's not much difference because the mechanism is uh, water vapor, heat energy causing uh, cell necrosis, no matter it's detesteride, any cell changes up to this uh, certain temperature, all the cell will die. Even the prostate cancer will die. So I, I don't think that detesteride will have the effect on the MIST, especially for the resume. But uh, for the education, uh, do we have uh, this feeling that uh, if the moisturization after detesteride, the prostate is a little bit fibrotic. It's more yeah. difficult for yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. Exactly, uh, I pointed to. Uh, have you done TURP after regime treatment? Any patient? TURP? Uh, any any surgery after regime? No. Uh, no, no, no. So far, no. So far, no. Oh. So far, no. But uh, we we do have uh, uh ULI, uh, then we have TRP. The one that I have mentioned, uh, the ULI one, and then we have resume. But uh, this we need to resect the uh the the clip. The clip. So that's this case uh, required TRP. Other that for the pure resume case, uh, so far there's no uh, case for treatment. But in the long run, I would say that uh, this study, five year, you also have 4.4% of the cases require surgical treatment. The regem is less costly than uh, uh, Eurolift? Yes, yes. Uh, because uh, Eurolift for uh, in Hong Kong is around uh, maybe four, four treatment to eight treatment. Is uh, if this is so, then it will be uh, 
few times more expensive than resume. Okay. Yeah, resume is fixed cost. Fixed cost, although you have 15 cycle or five cycles, the cost is the same. But the ULIF is uh, more the cycle, more treatment, then you have a more cost. So okay. it's different. More number of applications, more costly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So thank you very much for such nice presentation, very crisp. And I did not know anything much about RISM. This is the first time I am listening. I am the first beneficiary. Okay. Nearly 150 across the world have watched the program. By tomorrow, okay, it will be 1,000. And uh, okay. it will be very useful. In a couple of months, we will discuss transperineal biopsy. It is your favorite topic. Uh, sure. uh, much of the India will get benefited because of that. I will okay. be very happy if I come back to you. Yeah, sure. Looking forward to that.